Everybody, please welcome the former Taishak of Ireland, Bertie Ahern. All right, sir. I see you. Thanks for coming on. This, uh, this is our first show uh, that we've done from Dublin, so we figured we might as well get the guy that used to run the country on. It seems reasonable. Anything we should know? Uh, while we're spending our time here? Well, just enjoy it. You're yeah. right in the heart of the city here. So we have Temple bad. Bar and some nice places. And Temple Bar is crazy. Yeah, well, it's uh, about 150,000 people. Yeah, but none of them are Irish. They're all like Dutch and German. Yeah, well, they come in everywhere, and yeah. including yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, you drunk. I'm stepping over people on the cobblestone. It's uh, really quite old school. No, it, it used to be a, an, an old rundown area. Yeah. Um, one of the guys that was working with me on security detail uh, used to do his. Uh, his duty around there, just drifting around, and it was the deadest place. And back in the early 80s, late 70s, it was the deadest part of Dublin. Run down, no shops, very few businesses, really only storerooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were going to knock it down and build a bus station. And thankfully, they didn't do that. They decided to rejuvenate it as part of a, a cultural part of the city and you know, entertainment. And uh, there's a lot of the uh, cultural uh, institutes there as well now, so it's it's really it's a really it's a great place and it's been a huge success. I mean, the unemployment rate right now in Ireland is is staggeringly 12. high. Twelve. Twelve percent is a high yeah. number. Yeah. What do you, what do you do now when all of that effort has gone into it and the economy is tanked so tragically that that this while not in the same place it would have been in 1977, yeah. Ireland's in trouble. Yeah, well we we, we went from about 4.8 to 12.4, like that. Yeah, and um, uh, that's a huge shock to the system. Uh, it, construction was the biggest hit, but it's not only construction. Most sectors of the Irish economy in the last 12 months um, have, have, you know, have very dramatic unemployment. And 12% uh, uh, could go higher. Some of the economists uh, say it could go 15, 16. I think that's where the top end of it would be. Uh, so it's, again, going to be a, a big task to try and, uh, uh, to try and uh, you know, resurrect the, the economy again and, and various sectors of it. You know, when you were the Prime Minister here, the Taoiseach, you, uh, you were called the People's Prime Minister. When I told someone I was coming, that you were coming on the show, uh, cab drivers were telling me how they'd pick you up late at night. And I, and I actually would be, I would say to them, what are you talking about? They'd say, oh yeah, he'd be outside late night one night, he didn't, he'd send his driver home and there he is in the middle of the street flagging a cab. And I went, when he was the Prime Minister? He's like, yeah. I went, who does that? But they said that, that was really important in Ireland to be a man of the people. When you are in charge and people like you, um, and clearly to be a politician for as long as you have, you have to have a relationship with the public that is, I think, unparalleled, I think, for most jobs. But then when things start to go tough, what's it like for you when you look around and go, oh, man, maybe they don't like me as much well, anymore? Well, I, I think, no, pe 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 people are in intelligent to people know. That doesn't mean people aren't denied when they lose their jobs. Of course they are. You know, when people are pressed hard in their mortgages, mortgages and, you know, they, they certainly are upset. Um, and, you know, when we had full employment, you know, everything was great. But, it's there's never in, in politics, you know, in good times, you're 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 blamed because they should be better. Mm -hmm. Bad times, why, why did you let them get bad? So you have to take that. But by and large, I, I find people are good. Of course, you get your full set. People come up uh, and blame you for the fact that Baron Stearns nearly collapsed and Lehman's nearly collapsed mm -hmm. and that you know the world economy went down. I said, Thank you very much. I'm glad you consider I'm so powerful. <laughs> but um, you know, it, but you have to take your share of the blame, and we, 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 we mm -hmm. gladly take that. And in Ireland, because we're a small country, I mean, people literally can come up in the street and give you their views. And I don't mind that. I like that once they don't hit me. I, 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 <laughs> Has anybody I, taken a swing at you? Yeah, well, well you know, that fellow isn't down Temple Bar now and again, but they don't mean it. Um, but, First of all, what are you doing I, in Temple Bar? What, what kind of the <laughs> night is it? I love Temple Bar. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I like a beer like anybody else. But I mean, it, it's a close knit community here, and it's not just me. I, I, I like to think that that you know Irish life is different. I mean, I, I Tony Blair and, and I were great friends over the years because we've been working on Northern Ireland. And Tony Blair, I remember we were in Newcastle once after a Man United Newcastle game. And you know, he said, I believe in Dublin you can go to a bar after a game. And I said, of course I can. I can do it in Newcastle too. And so can you. He said, no, you couldn't do that. Security. And I said, you could. You just, we drove down the road and we stopped at a place. And I said, does that look half respectable? And he said, I don't know. Um, so <laughs> he, 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 he supported Newcastle, not me. And we went in and nobody cause any problem. Did a few people him? said, they well, didn't recognize me, but they said hello to Tony. <laughs> and um, I got a few, few, few free beers because they were his friends. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, there's no big deal. I, I think it's in the head of, yeah. of politicians that you can't do things 
I mean, if you, if, if you get out of your car and, and, and stop being high and mighty, you know, and, and in, in Ireland, if you try to be high and mighty, they'll quickly tell you what they think. Yeah, sure. And that's a good thing. Well, the, what, what, I mean, so that's the, the, if you relate to politics, but when the scandals came on, you had the issue and you ended up stepping aside from your position. Yeah. How did that get to you? Oh, well, and I, because I thought it was, I, I was very unfairly treated. I mean, from my point of view, two huge developers were having a row and um, over a site that had nothing to do with me. Uh, and, you know, I, I got into the middle of it. Uh, and then I was hauled over, and every little thing they could find in me, they threw at me. But the central issue, the accusation was against me that there were two developers, one called Callaghan, one called Martin, who were fighting each other over several hundred millions, uh, best of luck to them. Uh, and, but I got embroiled in it because one guy said that the other fellow gave me money, mm. and I got money for none of them. And, you know, whenever the guys finalised their report... Um, but you paid money back. Was that for other stuff? Yeah, well, that, and, and, and there was nothing... Uh, in any of the, the accusations that were made against me, it was only over these two developers. There were a whole lot of other things that they dug up on me, but it was nothing to do with these two guys, which was the central argument. But then when the other stuff comes up, you still have to deal with it. Well, no, because that wasn't... I mean, there, there was no accusation against me on, on that. I mean, the other stuff was just thrown up to, you know, embarrass me and to, you know, keep the thing going for a while, and it did that. So, I mean, I'm sure that's got to get to you in a sense, though, when you, well, you step away from the position you worked very hard to get. Yeah, well, listen, I've been there a long time. I mean, you know, I, I've, over 20 years in, 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 uh, as a minister. As a minister from 1987, almost uh, uninterrupted till May 2008. Mm -hmm. I've been in Parliament since 77, so... You know, there's always there's always something you don't get too excited. But I would have liked to have been around for for that for the for the period because uh, it was a difficult period. It was a good challenge, and I think I would have had things to offer it. But well, well, I want to come back and talk to you about what you'll do next. But the the you mentioned Tony Blair, Northern Ireland. Tomorrow on the show, we're running a piece about the troubles up there and what it's like now, and just getting a, a you know a tour from a taxi cab driver about, about the region. You you came into power just, I think, the year before, essentially, the Good Friday Agreement. Like, you, 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 this was a big part of your mandate, wasn't it? It was. It, we, we, we started to negotiate the Good Friday Agreement in September 97, and we brought it to inclusion um, in 98, mm -hmm. Friday 98. So it was kind of about seven, eight months of, of negotiations to bring it to an end. And that, that was the, in some ways, that was the easy bit. Um, negotiating it was easy. Mm -hmm. Implementing it took nearly nine years after that. Were you, were you confident that it, because people had been, you know, they thought they were going to get peace at some level? And yeah, well, it was up and down. I mean, you know, th things dramatically changed after 97. I mean, after 97, it was never as bad again, but there were individual incidents. I mean, one, the worst incidents in all of the trouble took place in, in the 15th of August of 98, just a few months after it in Oma, where the, the biggest single atrocity. Um, and then there were other you know, events that happened and other tragedies that happened. But I think after Good Friday Agreement, it was never as, as difficult again. Uh, but even to this day, I mean, there are a small group of people in Northern Ireland who are hell-bent in, in, in engaging in violence. But I think 98%, you could say, of, of the people now gone to peace for me. It's Northern Ireland is doing well. Mm -hmm. Its economy is doing well. Unemployment in Northern Ireland today is, is half of what it is in the South. So I imagine when you look back at the Good Friday Agreement, it's just such a different thing for you because you had the signing of the agreement and the funeral of your mother at the same time. Yeah, same yeah, time. yeah. My, my, my mother was buried on the Wednesday during the negotiations, so I was back and forward, up and down. And uh, What was that like for you, just emotionally? I mean, you had well, a job to carry, but still. Uh, well, you had a job to carry, and, and I think in some ways it probably gives you your strength as well. I mean, you know, she'd gone hopefully up to heaven, I think she did. And that she's probably up there looking down at me, and you know, probably giving you strength to, to you know, mm -hmm. to keep to, to keep going and try to, to you know, to get on with things. And it, it was it was a tough week, but you know, you don't call these things. Uh, you know, you just have to deal with them when they happen. No, certainly. So then you stepped out of office, and you could have had a, a whole bunch. Of, by the way, are you going to run for the presidency? Are you going to do that? Uh, that's, that's an interesting question. Yeah, it's a fabulous, somebody, somebody say that to you? But that's not an answer, though. <laughs> interesting questions aren't an answer. I, let, me, let me let me rephrase this. All right, no. Are you going to run for the presidency? Is that, do you, is that a possibility? Well, my, my, my answer to it, because people keep asking me, my answer to it is our president is in office on, until November right. uh, 2011. And we've never had a campaign in this country that was longer than six months. So mm -hmm. sometime by March or April 2011, I had to make up my mind. Are you open to that job? I'll tell you that in April 2011. <laughs> <laughs>
if you don't have that job, will you be going for the leadership of the EU after what's going on you know, the, with, with Lisbon and all that? The, the role of the president will change for the EU. Yeah, that, that, would well, you go I, for that? I, I mean, that was a job I was in, interested in before. I don't think I'm in a strong position because that time I'd been president of, 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 of Europe in 2004. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that you know, the agreement was to be ratified and then it might have came up in 2006. And so I, I think there'll be far bigger players than, than me the next time around. I think Tony Blair might be one. Um, I think uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, who's the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, who's been, you know, kind of in the European Council now. No one's even heard of Luxembourg. Yeah, well, well, yeah, but, but they keep on getting the top jobs in yeah, Europe. Yeah, they do, it's right? It's amazing. Uh, they're small. They're small is beautiful, but they're smaller than us. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Bill Clinton might even be up for that job. Uh, no, no, no. Bill is making too much money. <laughs> He's doing just fine. Uh, and uh, I guess you took a, pay, a day job um, writing sports. We'll come back and we'll, we'll learn a little bit about sports with Bertie O'Hearn when we return on the hour. Unlike American football, where they were all padded up and you couldn't hurt them if you tried, um, Irish football has nothing on. If a fella takes a straight hit, yeah. you know, real men, not dummies. And uh, <laughs> uh, so it's a, a real, real game. Back here on the hour with the former Prime Minister of this country, Bertie Ahern is here. People call you Bertie. No one goes by your official titles, do they? Nobody. Do you ever get pissed off and go, I'm the Prime Minister no. of the Take Check? Never? <laughs> no. Not even your moment? No. <laughs> Who's the, um, the best Dublin band ever? Is it, is it you two or is it Thin Lizzy? Um, your best band ever? Yeah, from uh, Dublin. You, you two. I yeah. mean, in, in, in the level of what they've achieved, 25 years at the top. Does it mean a lot to a, a, a country when, when a band, not, like, not just you two, but any country with a band that steps out, does it mean a lot to a, a leader of a country when they have that kind of, you know, that kind of Yeah, I, I think in any country, particularly a small country, uh, there's only a, a small number of people that get to the, you know, the pinnacle uh, of whatever they're in. Uh, we have a few in writers, uh, we have a few in music, mm -hmm. um, and we, we have a few in, in sport. Uh, so it, it's, it's always, uh, I think everybody automatically supports whatever. And the fact that you two have you know, what, done five world tours now, one more successful than the other, mm -hmm. uh, huge sales, uh, you know, known throughout the world. And of course Bono, apart from his music, has taken a, a huge lead role in, in, in fighting for Third World Aid. And you guys worked together on that? Yeah, we, were, we worked on the Overseas Development Aid, and, and um, you know, Ireland always were, were, was very proud of our contribution. I, I know you know him and you know you too, but just as a leader, when, when rock stars walk into a room, when Geldof walks into a room, when, any, when, when you know, at, at Davos, when Sharon Stone gets up and starts you know, banging on the podium, does, does, does it actually resonate? Because you get the impression that most politicians, it's great photo opportunity, looks amazing for their kids' Facebook mm. wall, but that's kind of where it ends. I, I don't like um, any superstars just taking up a, a cause uh, and, and then lecturing the, the rest of us, um, particularly when, when you know, they, they don't seem to do too much themselves around it. I mean, they get up on the, on the platform and, um, and make their homily. Uh, I, I, I'd be as anti that as anybody else, but in fact, Bono has consistently uh, and Gelder, argued, like, right? yeah, and yeah. They've consistently now for um, what since about '84, uh, Live Aid, and right through the '80s, uh, they they fought this issue of of, of of hunger and third world debt, and they 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 are quite uh, not quite they are uh, an authority on the subject. It's it's hard to, to to learn about economies. The hardest thing to do in the world, though, is to become a decent sports reporter, which you became because it's the one genre where you can guarantee that your audience knows more than you is when you get. <laughs> Into the world of sports, and they'll let you have it. Why did you decide to become a sports writer? Uh, well, I, I, I think uh, I've always been hugely interested in sport. I spent all my, my years playing. I played up until I was about you know 35. What did you play? I played uh, football and soccer, Irish football, Gaelic football. Uh, that's the uh, soccer where you pick up the ball with your hands. Uh, no, that's Gaelic oh, football. Gaelic football. That's, that's, that's Gaelic that's football. That's insane. That sport. It's, it is a, it's a real man's game. No, I don't understand it. Okay, explain that to me. It's, it's a, I'll explain it to you. It's 15 a side. Right. And it's um. You can't pick up the ball. You, you have to kind of hook it. 
uh, you can solo it yep. on your foot. Right. Uh, it's mainly high catching, high kicking, very fast, an amateur game here. Mm -hmm. um, unlike American football, where they were all padded up and you couldn't hurt them if you tried. Um, Irish football has nothing on. You, a fella takes a straight hit. Yeah. You know, real men, not dummies. And uh, <laughs> uh, so it's a, a real, real game. Uh -huh. you know, and you don't have intervals of a half an hour every five minutes. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, you it's, play straight through. It's real football. So that's Irish football. That's Irish football. Which but it's, it's, it's hugely skillful. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, the former Prime Minister of Ireland, Bertie O'Hearn. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back.